Since the dawn of time, humans have searched for the meaning of life. From ancient myths to modern self-help books, we're desperate to find a purpose in this vast and different universe. Every culture has its own story about how the universe began. The Babylonians believed the world was hatched from a cosmic egg. The Norse had a primordial cow licking salty ice. And in Scientology, an alien overlord nuked billions of souls in volcanoes. Meanwhile, science tells us the universe started with a Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since. The Earth is a tiny speck orbiting an average star in one of trillions of galaxies. If the history of the universe were a year, human existence would be a fraction of a second on December 31st. In other words, we're cosmically insignificant. But do we let that get us down? Of course not. We keep searching for meaning like a dog chasing its tail. These days you can't swing a quantum crystal without hitting a guru who claims to have found the key to a fulfilled life. Meditate your way to enlightenment. Manifest your dreams with positive thinking. Bend reality with the power of intention. Of course, if these methods actually worked, we'd all be blissed out demigods by now. But most of us are still anxious, depressed, and scrolling through Instagram at 3 a.m. So what gives? Enter the existentialists, the pessimists. Thinkers like Albert Camus and Jean-Paul Sartre grappled with the absurdity of the human condition. They realize that in a universe without inherent meaning, we're all just extras in a B-movie nobody's watching. In his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus compares the human condition to the Greek king condemned to push a boulder up a hill for eternity. No matter how hard we try, any meaning we create will eventually crumble. But Camus argues we should imagine Sisyphus happy, embracing the struggle as an act of rebellion. That's the absurd hero, the one who looks into the void, shrugs, and keeps on keeping on. Sounds exhausting, but hey, it beats watching Friends reruns for the millionth time. Let's talk about our old pal, the Grim Reaper. Ingmar Bergman's classic film The Seventh Seal follows a knight playing a literal chess match with death. Spoiler alert, nobody wins. But the real kicker? At one point death turns to the camera and speaks directly to the audience. It's like Bergman is saying, hey, you're in on this cosmic joke too, buddy. Hope you brought popcorn. Of course, hell isn't just being trapped in a room with no windows and no escape. As Sartre famously said, hell is other people. Try putting that on a Hallmark card. In his play No Exit, three damn souls are locked in a room together for eternity. It's like the world's worst group project. They torment each other with their pettiness and bad faith until Garson finally declares, there's no need for red-hot pokers, hell is other people. Somehow, I don't think he was invited to a lot of parties. But hey, at least existential despair makes for some killer one-liners. In the movie Sideways, Miles laments that he's waiting for his life to start, while well, he's already in his forties. In Annie Hall, Alvy Singer stops the action to muse on the futility of relationships. And don't even get me started on Russ Cole's time as a flat circle speech. These characters use humor as a defense mechanism, a way to cope with the sheer absurdity of it all. It's like they're saying, sure, life is meaningless, but at least I can land a killer punchline. But why do we cling so desperately to meaning in the first place? Enter Ernest Becker and his cheerfully titled book, The Denial of Death. Becker argues that our fear of mortality drives everything we do, from creating art to waging war. Basically, we're all just trying to distract ourselves from the fact that we're going to die. Becker calls this terror management theory, which sounds like a rejected Pixar movie pitch. But what happens when we realize our comforting illusions are just that, illusions? In The Truman Show, Jim Carrey plays a man who discovers his entire life as a TV show. Talk about a bad case of imposter syndrome. When Truman finally breaks free, he faces a terrifying choice, stay in his fake but familiar world, or venture into the unknown of reality. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure book where every ending is a bummer. But hey, at least we can laugh at the cosmic joke of our existence, right? I mean, here I am, a YouTuber waxing philosophical about the meaning of life. If that's not absurd, I don't know what is. But maybe, that's the point. In a universe without inherent meaning, we get to create our own. And what could be more meaningful than using technology to ponder the big questions, and crack a few jokes while we're at it? It's like we're the punchline to a joke we wrote ourselves. That's the power of absurdist humor.
When Louis C.K. jokes about the futility of human existence or a meme turns Nietzsche into a punchline, they're rebelling against the sheer cosmic ridiculousness of it all. It's like they're saying, yeah, the universe is an uncaring void. In a world where nothing matters, laughter may be the only thing that does. It's a way of asserting our humanity in the face of oblivion, a defiant middle finger to the indifferent cosmos. So maybe that's the secret to a meaningful life, embracing the absurdity. Like Phil Connors in Groundhog Day, we're all stuck in our own repetitive loops. But we can choose to find joy in the eternal recurrence, to create our own purpose in the face of futility. It's like Nietzsche said, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. So let's dance on the edge of the abyss, laugh in the face of the void, and trust that the punchline will be worth the setup. In the end, maybe the meaning of life is the search itself. The cosmic joke that we're all in on. The fleeting moments of connection and transcendence amidst the chaos. Sure, we're all hurtling towards the same inevitable punchline. But in the meantime, we might as well enjoy the setup. We can find meaning in the absurdity, create purpose in the pointlessness, and embrace the beautiful futility of it all. And if that doesn't work, well, there's always Netflix.